So I'm here with Leslie Bowman, who is going to discuss a Tidal Power Project. What is the name of the project? Our project is Half Moon Cove Tidal Power Project. And we are at the... Uh, Border Historical Society, and it's the home of the original model for the Quadi project. So when we talk about um, tidal power in this area, we have to go back well, to the earliest days um, when tidal power was used in mills, uh, so for lumber, for grinding grain, tidal power goes back to the original days of, of European settlement in, in these waters because we have such extreme tidal range. Between high and low, um, it averages 20 feet, the difference between high tide and low tide. This huge model here was built as part of the uh, Quadi Bay project. And if you can focus in with this uh, photograph up here, you have uh, Franklin Roosevelt standing with the model at its original site out in Quadi Village. What we're seeing here is a model of this whole region. And this map, if you want to come over here, Wes. <coughs> We're on Moose Island down here, Eastport, and there are two huge bays. There's, uh, there's um, Passamaquoddy Bay, and then there's Cobbscook Bay. And what this project aimed to do was to generate power from these tides by building a series of dams. This was a huge project, over 200 megawatt. Um, two to three hundred megawatt project. It was a huge project, but it required the construction of dams. And so the model here shows us that. The first set of dams that were built are on the roads that lead into Eastport. So when you came into Eastport today, you drove over causeways through the reservation, over causeways, into Eastport. Prior to that time, the only way to ac access Eastport was across the bridge by road, and that actually, the old bridge, is the site of Half Moon Cove project. So I thought it was a good idea to start here, mm -hmm. because you can see the big plan, the dams that were built over here at Pleasant Point, where it says Pleasant Point, do you see that Pleasant Point sign? Mm, yes. Okay, that's the reservation. And then it goes to Split Rock, Carlow Island. Well, that green across there, those are actually dams. Those were the first dams that were built. When were those built? Those were built in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the Quadi project. They built a village, a Quadi village. I'll show you Quadi village. And then they started those dams. And then they also built a dam between Treat Island, which is here, and Dudley Island. And then they did a, put a bunch of core samples in for testing. That's really, besides the village where the workers lived, the, the, the causeways coming in from Pleasant Point to Quaddy Village, and then a little dam between Treat and Dudley Island, those were the only actual construction uh, projects associated with the, with the big Passamaquoddy title project. Well, funding broke down for this um, in the 30s, and there are you know, you can read a lot of stories about why it never got built, but it wasn't built. It came back up again in the 60s, an all-American project. The thing about this project is partially in Canada. We're in Canada here. The rope here indicates the Canadian US, border? Yeah. So, okay. it, so it was called the International Project. It was mm -hmm. partly in Canada and partly in um, the U.S. When it was brought back up in the 60s, it was called the All-American Project. And, and so under Kennedy's um, administration, it was revived, but never, you know, and then after the assassination session, it was never, ever brought back up again. Um, there are probably a lot of good reasons why it wasn't built. It would have had a huge impact uh, environmentally on this area. We're talking about huge dams uh, in, in, in waters that are three and 400 feet deep between here in Eastport and Indian Island, three or 400 feet there. Um, so big dams would have needed to be built, and the tides would have been drastically uh, changed the regime because you have to have a high pool and a low pool. The gal said that um, fishing above these dams would have been um, 
uh, basically stopped because it would always be high tide on the other side? Uh, no. no. That's not true. There's, there's a lot of misconceptions about what this project was and what tidal projects are in general. And um, it's, it's, it's complicated. Each project has, has its own um, environmental mm -hmm. impacts. But mm -hmm. th there wasn't a lot of concern for fish, fish passage um, at the time. But it wouldn't always have been high tide. Now, they would have had to have let some back and mm -hmm. forth going on. So let's, um, what I'd like to do is, is, unless you have any more questions about here. So tell me which ones are proposed specifically now. Right now there's two projects. One's actually in the works. Um, well, they're both in the works, but one's, we're going to go down and see the ORPC turbines, which are current driven devices. Mm -hmm. They require no dams. Uh, they just go for run of the water. Uh, they just use the water current. Mm -hmm. see and the where water. are they located? They're going to be out in, uh, the first set is is going to go out in uh, North Lubeck. Um, it says North Lubeck there. Between North Lubeck and Eastport, out in that passage, is where they're placing the first turbine. And we can we can look at those. So between here Eastport and, here. and North Lubeck. And can you show me on, and where are the other ones, the w ones you're proposing? Okay, and so the proposal that we have is basically um, it, it would have been where it says Quadi Village, that big kind of dam looking thing mm -hmm. there. Not that far from there. It's actually between Quadi Village and the land beyond at the site of the old toll bridge. So if you look here, and actually mm. I can show you, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not saying this. Um, this this is the Quadi Village we're going to be driving in. Mm -hmm. These are the, the reservation and the causeways. This is the site of the old toll bridge, and that's where our mm -hmm. site is. So we'll be, we'll be going and looking at that. Now, can you tell me, please, what is the um, advantage and disadvantage to having dams versus... Um, okay. It is... Um, this is the technical aspects mm -hmm. of it. When you have just run of the water, you are you're, you're um, depending on just the current mm -hmm. to to cause your turbines to generate just mm -hmm. the current. So uh, when when the tide comes in, it goes through a period of being stopped, slack, totally slack, mm -hmm. starting to build up, starting to build up, and then getting fairly fast maybe five knots, six knots at some point, mm -hmm. and then slacking off again, mm -hmm. and then it'll go in the other direction. So your turbine that doesn't have a dam is going to be, it's most, will have the most efficiency right um, at the highest velocity, mm -hmm. which is a peak, which is peak, you know, like the peak mm -hmm. generating time. It's not very long. So first of all, so you're requiring um, to generation over a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. When you have, when you build a dam, you create a head. The difference between high and low tide in is is a head, and any mm -hmm. dam has that differential, so that it's and it's a velocity cubed. So mm -hmm. you take the velocity and you cube it. So there's the and Norman could have spoke better about this, and he could answer mm -hmm. questions for you. But so you take that. Um, head and you get three times as much power coming through and you can also control um, the length of duration of generating of power based on how how you, you build up the head and how you generate through that cycle. Now with the dam do you do it in both directions too? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to take you to some of these sites. This shows the old toll bridge. So it used to be before the dams were built, there was um, the bridge was covered, and mm -hmm. then there were some pictures where it wasn't covered. Mm -hmm. But that's the site. That road is where Half Moon Cove is proposed. And um, if 
before we're, before we're through, I, I've got my 35 millimeter. If we I can also it. send you a PowerPoint. Oh, that'd that be has great. Okay. Yeah. So this shows you a dam, and you have your, you hold the water back mm -hmm. till it reaches, we, we go for a five foot differential, and then you have a lot more power going mm. through. Instead of just running, just with the water being at the same level, you get that much increase. Gotcha. And this shows the tide, the natural tide cycle, and then the cycle when you're when you're um, using the head. And the so, red indicates the gain you get by using the head. Yeah. Excellent. I got it. Okay. So you want to go see some stuff? I'd love to. Thank you. This is the model of the ORPC turbine scaled down but this is what that turbine where we saw the um, derrick in the water that's what it looks like okay so there's a causeway you see the truck going across the causeway now that was built part of the original project and um, it goes right through the reservation and it's trucks and cars go all the time from there. It also, on your left, this is Passamaquoddy Bay, and on the other side of the causeway is Cobscrook Bay, also half Moon Cove. By opening up this causeway, the tribe has been interested in just um, bulldozing the whole thing or blasting it open, but the Army Corps isn't going to go along with that. But by building... Um, a facility of flat, well, flap gates, of gates, at least between mid-tide and high tide, you'd be able to open it up and let the waters flush through. It would help fill the, the impoundment, it would help fill the half, half Moon Cove for generating power, and it would also allow for mixing of water. And so we we put that into the project, it's extra cost, but it still keeps the project, depending on financing, under eight cents a kilowatt hour. I think that's really important because part of this project is it's so economically viable. And the reason that it's it, that it hasn't been licensed yet is because of environmental hurdles. And those are all the things we discussed. Mm. Um, getting it licensed is very difficult. People say that this, nothing like this will ever be built in the United States. It's built in Canada, France, China, Korea. Uh, they're looking in UK. So many places that have a good tidal range are considering doing this, but um, there's a lot of reluctance. So I think you know, looking at political issues, why, why not?